Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners. This is Comesa Radio Africa, the voice of Comesa, the organization everybody wants to be associated with. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. That is our philosophy. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That's the idea. We are a business and professional management services 24-7 internet streaming radio station. We broadcast 50% of music and 50% talk shows. Our talk shows aim to affirm and support business professionals and entrepreneurs in their personal and professional journey of bringing difference to the world. Our objective is to use the African storytelling and the Hotla conversation methodology in offering career coaching, education and learning guidance, continuous professional development, enterprise and entrepreneurship development, and connecting supply to demand. My name is Sam Zima. I am the CEO and Executive Business Coach at Comesa GOC International. You may reach us at www.comesa-goc.com. You are also invited to take either individual or corporate membership with our NPO, Comesa Friends and Supporters Club, and that can be done online at www.comesa-club.africa. And you can also send us email at callcenter at commerza-goc.com or at admin at commerza-development.com. At this moment, I would like to invite my fellow coach, uh, Esme Vetbo, who's going to join me in discussing some few themes around the coaching profession. Welcome, Esme. Hi, Sam. Thanks for having me. Lovely. How are you doing today? I'm absolutely brilliant. Thank you. How are you today? I'm very well. I'm very well. Yeah, I, I thank you for, invite, for accepting my invitation. I thought you and I, as fellow pro coaching professionals, we, we may just enlighten uh, the others around some few issues we are picking up in coaching. You know, uh, yes. yesterday I, 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 I read, uh, I like, I like uh, 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 Sir John Whitmore. You know, he's been regarded as the father of, of coaching and the, the person who introduced Grow Model to coaching. Yes. And uh, as I was listening to some of the videos and the interviews that he was doing across the world, I realized that he, 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 he was very principled somebody who was very committed to coaching being done the right way. Yes. What is your view around, I mean, there's, there's this thing of saying, you are a coach before you even go to a coaching program and learn to become a coach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sam, yes, absolutely. Yeah. This is like the new trend, I believe. Yes. And what are you picking up there in the industry that... Uh, is of major uh, interest to you or of major concern to you? My major concerns, uh, what I pick up in the industry, you must remember, I trained my coaching um, in, in the UK. Yes. And that was quite a brilliant experience because it was the pure coaching, completely the way John Whitmer has, has described it to be. Mm. And in my finding in the industry in South Africa, Sam, everyone is a coach. This mm. is absolutely crazy. I mean, you help, you teach somebody to sing, you're a vocal coach. Mm. You give financial advice, you are a finance coach. The word coaching, the term has just been um, abused and uh, completely demoralized and completely taken away from the original concept of peer coaching. Now, people who are psychologists, uh, you name it, counsellors. They all call themselves also coaches. Why, is it, why is it so? Yes, they lock their hours as coaching hours because they believe if you are in a room one-on-one -on -one with someone, people believe it is coaching. 
Can I, as a coach, call my my coaching session with my client the cancelling hours? <laughs> Imagine you do it the other way around. So I am really an ambassador of this uh, of coaching, to be quite honest, and it being done correctly. Because you must remember, Sam, uh, the uh, the true reason of coaching and what makes coaching so different from any other intervention. We share things in common with counselling, with psychology with other forms of therapy, and there is a place for all these forms of therapy. However, we're all in the, the business of helping people, but coaching has a different approach. The main aim of coaching is the unlocking of the potential of the person you are dealing with. And in order to do that, John Whitmer made it very clear, coaching has to be a non-advisory intervention. Mm. because to unlock the potential. You can't unlock someone's potential when you are telling them what to do. When you go to psychiatrists or psychologists, they give you a diagnosis to, to your problem. A coach doesn't give a diagnosis to the problem. Mm. The coachee has resources to solve their own problem, and our duty as a coach is to extract that out of them through our skills of listening and questioning. So uh, this is very, very important that people need to get before they call themselves coaches. Are you telling people what to do? Then you are not coaching. Mm, mm. You know, are you, are you giving someone a prescription because that's your advice? And who says your advice is going to work on somebody else? The main, also main principle of coaching is the coaching needs to take ownership of the problem. And, and you need to put them in a resourceful state to solve it themselves. So if you tell them what to do and they go out and they do it and they don't get results, where is the accountability and the ownership? Mm, they will tell you, you said I must do what I did and it didn't work. So what's next? So they become dependent on you. And that's the real true coach. A true coach doesn't make a coach dependent on them. You, you teach them how to motivate themselves. Mm. Wonderful. You, you, so, yes, absolutely. Yeah. So, so the the problem that you are picking up is that uh, because the, the the profession is not regulated, anybody that feels like calling themselves coach, they are becoming coach. And and you are saying that uh, that is causing a damage to the good name of the profession of coaching. It absolutely, Sam. You got a spot on. It is really. Uh, uh, it needs to be more tightly regulated. Um, and before anyone hire a coach, you have to really double check their credentialing, uh, which governing body they are belonging to. Are they under supervision uh, mm. before you hire a coach? Mm. Because even mm. though Sam, you must understand, this is what people don't get. Coaching is a calling. Mm. Not anyone can be a coach. You can go and study a coaching training course. Fantastic, brilliant. Use skills as a manager in your working environment or in your everyday life to better your communication perfectly. But does that make you a coach? Like somebody who is a pastor. You are called to be a pastor. Mm. Not anyone can be that. Coaching is the same. It's mm. a calling. Mm. It's mm. a calling, Sam. It's not just anyone. That mm. can be a coach, and people who hire coaches must watch out for this. Yeah. They must really. I, I like I like that as men. I think we uh, we must underline that because it is not only those people who purport purport to become coaches to blame, but also the buyers of coaching service, which happens to be in many cases the training or HR professionals out there. Absolutely, yes. Or Absolutely. even the line managers, or even the individuals themselves, the coaches themselves, uh, uh, you are saying that they need to check. But in most, in most cases, people don't know. Yes, and, and to be quite honest, when I came in 2011 back to South Africa from the UK, I was five years there practicing coaching and, and, and NLP. And I came back to uh, South Africa and in, yeah, in the coaching. Coaching wasn't an industry known. Nobody it, knew what coaching was. It wasn't, uh, uh, you know, on the tip of the tongue. Coaching is really becoming now... Fashionable. Uh, re yes, a profession that, that, that mm. is becoming well-known yeah. and businesses are seeing, starting to see the value of mm. having coaching. And, and, uh, like and uh, Esme, that is, it's for that reason why I have started this slot 
um, at Comesa Radio Africa called Sam Tima Coaching. The purpose is exactly to discuss this type of issues because I don't think we should fight as fellow professionals, but we need to tell the truth to the potential customers out there that, yes, indeed, not everybody can call themselves a coach. And, and therefore, they need to be aware of that uh, and they need to be aware of the potential damage that can be done with people calling things that are not coaching, coaching. Yes. Yeah, very well said, Sam. It's, it, 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 it's about discussing the truth. Yes. And I'm not here to, yeah. to, to bring anyone down, but this is the truth of the profession. Um, and, and, and these truths, it needs to be respected and buyers of coaching need to be aware. Yes. And, and Esme, to. I think you and I, we are very much aware. Uh, in its current form, coaching is not even older than 30 years. It's very young yes. in, in South Africa, and, uh, but across the globe as well. And therefore, we, what we are doing with this platform and me talking to you, and I hope we're going to talk regularly because we are very interested in, in coaching really becoming prominent in South Africa and help solve so many problems out there. Uh, yes. so, so we have the responsibility to grow the profession, but at the same time, we need to sensitize the role players out there, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and I know you and I, we're going to have another discussion in the coming days where I'm just going to be focusing on your professional journey. And, and, and then I will, I, will, I, will, I, will, I will go deeper to find out what were you doing in the UK. <laughs> 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 uh, because, uh, because it looks like you, you did quite a number of things there, including coaching. But let's focus okay. on South Africa. Uh, so, so I'm noting these things because I don't think we'll, we'll resolve them today, uh, but I just want to pick them up. So number one, everybody calls themselves coaching. People use wrong methodologies that are not really coaching that can mm. cause damage. And then we also picked up that the buyers of coaching don't really know exactly the difference that you and I know. Yes. Okay, and uh, the the other thing that uh, I thought we will talk about that because of the, the idea is we want the discussions out there to happen. Uh, the other thing I want us to talk about is um, uh, there's also a problem where everybody can run a coaching school. Oh yes. Mm hmm. Yes. Everybody can start a class and then charge money and then they run a coaching school. And and then 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 then, then people would know don't know they just register. Absolutely, and um, you know, Sam, that's a very interesting subject matter matter that you're bringing up there. I had a few, uh, you know, people who were very interested in coaching, and they had this ten day uh, ten day training program. Mm -hmm. And they were doing coaching and NLP. Now, Sam, I'm sorry to say there's no way you can come out of a 10-day training program being a coach and an NLP practitioner mm -hmm. at the same time. It's that, impossible. Look, I, I question the quality of that training. There is mm -hmm. no way. Mm -hmm. it, took, it, 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 it just can't be. You yes. can't sit with theory in a room for 10 days and get a certificate and you're a coach. Coaching is a practical skill. They, they need to do practice under supervision. Yes, you, under yeah, supervision absolutely. and uh, you can go in and log modules. a number of hours. Yes, you go for two, two modules of foundation of coaching, the basic. You go out and you need to go and practice those beginner steps that you learn. You cannot consume all of those skills in 10 days and be brilliant at doing it. And you come back with those hours, 20 hours you've done with clients and you under supervision and mentoring and you go into your next module. So... I really question this coaching schools and this the validity of the certification that is being given, mm. because Sam nowadays everyone is looking to to for entrepreneurship and to work and to work self employed, and mm. it seems like coaching seems to be now like the in thing to go for. Mm. Mm. Uh, you know, Sam, like oh, I you know. The, the economy seems very down. I don't know. I lost my job. Let me just become a coach. Mm. I like working with people. I like helping people. Mm. Why? Think, why? Why do you? Think, why people can't? Uh, there are so many related fields. We are not disputing the fact that 
These are all related. They are all in human capital development interventions. And they all of them have space. You can either become a mentor or you become a consultant, you become an advisor, you become a trainer, you become a facilitator, motivational speaker. There's so much that you can do rather than just calling yourself something that uh, you are really not going to live up to the expectations. Absolutely, Sam. And all those interventions, there is a place for all of them. And right now, people are just mixing interventions and they put it all under the umbrella of coaching. And Mm. there is, uh, you know, when I meet new clients and I've asked them, okay, have you ever, that's not always a question, have you ever had an experience of coaching before? I need to see where they're coming from. Mm. Um, And uh, they, they have. And I make it very clear before I run into a session explaining the principles of coaching, and it really map up and setting boundaries of how the, our intervention is going to work with. Mm. Uh, mm. Because they come with a very uh, limited or dim view of what they've had experience before. Mm. And they really appreciate that, that I make those boundaries very clear from the beginning so that expectations are being met between the two parties. Mm. Uh, because as a coach, you must be remember it's a collaboration partners- partnership. You are not the expert. Mm. The person in front of you is the expert at solving their own problem. You are a sounding board, a thinking partner, a facilitator. For them to arrive at those conclusions in what they're going to do themselves mm. and, 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 and be a guide in that. Mm. So there's a huge difference. As a trainer, you come in with a pre-agenda. You know the curriculum, what you are going to train on. You know what exactly what you are going to do, and you are the expert giving information. Coaching is different. Mm. We don't come in with a predetermined agenda. There's mm. nothing that says in your coaching session one, this is going, this is what we're going to do. In coaching session two, the client determines and designs their own program mm. Mm. themselves. You, you just hold the session for them. You hold the space for them. They come in whatever they come in, and you mm. just navigate and dance with you them. Know, you know, as we, you and I as professional coaches, we're talking very difficult language here. <laughs> <laughs> you hold the session for them. You, you don't come with the agenda. You dance with the, with the client. Yes. All those know, things are very complicated. You know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I can never go in and say, I'm preparing this is what we're going to do in this next session. You can't do that as a coach. That's mm. training. But, you know, also us as coaches, we are very critical of each other, aren't we? We are very sorry? We are very critical of each other, aren't we? I think, I think so, in a, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, you know uh, I think I agree with you that the broader understanding of what coaching is and what coaching is not is important. And the broader approach as, 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 as defined in those approaches is very important. But what I find uh, 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 concerning is that actually the client holds the power. So I always say that, and thanks for doing what you are doing in educating the client as well at the beginning yes. of the session because they yes. need to experience perhaps different kinds of coaches and then they have to make a choice. I think that there has to come a time where the clients actually demand certain things. And, and I want you to repeat them because you mentioned them. I'm a, I'm a buyer. Uh, in this case, I'm, a, I'm coming from training and development of an HR department, or I'm coming from HR department, or I'm a line manager and I've decided that my, my, sub, my subordinate is going to get executive coaching. And now I meet Esme uh, and Sam. Now I'm comparing Esme and Sam, and, and what do I use to determine who is really truly a coach between Sam and Esme? You have listed those things, and just, just slowly, let's enumerate them. The first point that the buyer must know about the coach, what is it? Yes, that is very true, Sam, is everyone needs to be educated about coaching before you actually go into any engagement or any contractual arrangement. So the first Even thing the, the first thing coaching. so the first thing will then be what the qualification. Yes, qualification. And and, and being registered to a coaching the Yeah, the let, let's sit, let's sit, let's sit first with that. We'll come to the others. 
because uh, I want people to get it very clear out there so that yes. we can have a meaningful conversation as buyers and suppliers of coaching products in the future because we are going to have this series. You and I, many other fellow coaches, are going to talk a lot on this, so we, we are not going to solve it overnight. So, yes. so what type of qualification are we talking when we say somebody must have a qualification? It's a qualify the qualification, Sam. Uh, that that the by the, the 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 look of a coaching has to look at it where the training organization where the person has got Aha. the qualification. So, so about the qualification, we're looking at the training provider as to whether that training provider is credible. Is credible, and if they are registered with the international uh, uh, international coaching federation. Or any, they or, or, have to be compliant in their trainings with that body. Let, let, let's, let's hold it there because you and I are going to uncover a lot of dynamites here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they must be registered with a reputable international coaching association. Absolutely. It, might not be, it may not be ICF. I am a member of ICF, but I want to make it clear that... Uh, there are many reputable coaching associations out there that carry the same credibility as the ICF. However, ICF happens to be the largest in terms of membership, right? Yes. And they happen to be across all countries, almost all countries in the world, if yes. not most. Now, yes. because why I'm saying that, Esme, and I want us to sit on the qualification, because we are educating now, isn't it? We are educating the market. Yes. In in Europe, there is a Europe European Mentoring and Coaching Council. Yes. In South Africa, there is coaches uh, uh, and mentors of South Africa Comensa. Yes. In in Germany, there is Deutsche Verband uh, for coaches, uh, something like that. I, I I just need to refresh my mind. So basically, yeah. the world, the way it's... And then, of course, there are others, coaches, association of coaches. There's quite a number. So, so am I right to say, Esme, before even we, we question the training provider, we need to question the, training, the coaches association itself? Itself, yes. There are, there are national coaches associations like we have Comenta in South Africa, and we do have yeah. ICF chapter in South Africa as well. Yes. And then you have EMCC in Europe. And then I'm sure in every country in Europe, you like I've mentioned in Germany, you'll have one. There are also yes. others. And all of them are reputable in their own way. Right, right. So, yes. so you are saying that uh, if you are the HR director of a particular company and coaching is really the product I want to offer my people, it starts with actually knowing who are the associations where these coaches group themselves among. Yes, spot on, Sam. Yeah, that is what. The, yes, because I don't, I don't want to, 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 to diminish the importance of others that might be overshadowed by the ICF. <laughs> but they, they, they coexist. Yes, they coexist, and and it's important that you mention that, Sam. And I'm, I'm very glad that you mentioned these other organizations. In, 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 in my experience here in South Africa, when it comes to people looking for coaching uh, uh, um, uh, uh, services, uh, they, they seem to be asking um, um, a lot uh, for ICF and commensal accreditation. Mm. Mm. Because uh, they don't know, or they're they not know. aware. Let me not say they're they not don't aware. know. They're not yes. aware. So, they are not aware. Yeah, because... Uh, uh, these associations also accredit training providers. They also accredit the universities. Yes, and the universities, do. as a providers of coaching certificates, or whatever they offer, have a choice as to which association they want to go along with, right? Yes. Wonderful. Yes. So we have yes. verified that. Now, having yeah. verified that, now I go and look for a tra coaching training provider who is accredited or, uh, by a particular association and then I investigate whether they do a good job. Yes, you invest, yeah. And then you are, the qualification, you are saying that qualification, we are saying that the qualification is made up of theory and practice. Yes. 
during the learning, not, not after, or it can be, it can be after as well. But you do come across associations and code providers who only offer theory and certificates, they go, you are qualified. That's what you are saying. You highlighted that. This is, this is the, the trend that people do this courses online for a few days and they get a certificate. Uh, there was no no practicals involved for them to supply. I remember when I was in the UK, they expected 50 logging coaching hours. Mm, mm. 50 logging coaching, that's ICF standards. Yes. Uh, 50 logging coaching hours before you get that certificate that you have coached. They yes. want it logged. They want... Uh, uh, um, 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 uh, they contact some of these clients. Um, because it must be hours that clients have paid for. Uh, they verify. They verify those hours. And I found there's a trend now. You have a training providers uh, of coaching, uh, Sam, who people are sitting for seven days in a room and they get a certificate. Hmm. I had a colleague who just recently done that. I don't want to mention this training organization, but... Uh, he was he, for seven days in a training and he came out with a certificate. I am a certified coach and NLP practitioner yeah. in seven I, I days. Want, I, wonder no if, I, I wonder if you can learn how to drive a car in, in five days and then you get onto the highway. <laughs> <laughs> I was shocked. I was surprised. I'm like, whoa, we're on the same level again. Yeah? You just had seven days in a room and you're also a coach like I am. Wow, great. Mm. Wow. And so, yes, so, so that, we, thank you. Very, we are not bashing anybody. We are just uh, 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 highlighting the challenges out there. The challenges. We're just highlighting the challenges uh, and the concerns we have. So, secondly, yes, the training actually. What the what what the, uh, the HR directors, whoever is searching for coaching, they have to secondly, Sam, also be looking at the training that the coach had received. Yes, um, yes. And if there was practical involved in, in, in the training mm, mm. and mentoring and supervision along making sure that this Aha. person I'm has, just, has I'm, just, I'm just noting that supervision. And supervision is not only during your training, it's throughout your practice as a coach. Yes, throughout. You have to be part of a supervision uh, uh, body. You Definitely as a coach, you have to feel continuous development. You really need to. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Um, and uh, and uh, and then I think the the other aspect that they must look for will be the credentialing. Yeah. Yes, the credentialing. Yeah. And that yes. as coaches grow and advance themselves, they can go for credentialing, which is offered by these uh, associations that we are mentioning. Yes, uh, yes, and, by the associations and. The interesting thing with the credentialing, because most of the current, most of coaches are just registered mm. with the, for example, the commencer body or whatever coaching bodies, governing bodies that are there, they are registered. Yes. However, there's another level that you have to go through, which is the credentialing. And yes. that is where you have to be, you have to have a certain amount of coaching hours before you enter certain levels. There is you know, senior practitioner, master's practitioner, all of these levels. Mm. There's a certain amount of our expectations. Mm. Uh, there is a certain amount of mentoring um, expect hours of expectations they have. Mm. Also, a certain amount of you, you will have to, uh, you have to do a live session of coaching and demonstrating mm. uh, the skills to, to, to be accepted for the level. Um, yeah. And these are all the levels that, 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 that people have to go through and that that coaching, those who are searching for coaching services need to be aware of. Mm, absolutely. Lovely. Esme, I, 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 as I said, we are going to be coming back on a regular basis uh, during this slot in the future. Uh, uh, the comments are, I mean, the same team are coaching, but we are talking coaching 101. Yes, coaching one oh one. We go to the next and the next level because we we just started. We just started, points. and yeah. uh, we are encouraging conversation out there. We want to empower the the buyers of coaching services. We want also to advise people who are undergoing coaching programs to be aware that they they have to do more than 
than, than what is being offered. But we will, next time I want us to look at really various type of coaching providers without naming them, and just to look at what is the landscape in South Africa because, because as it's becoming this famous, we're going to have a lot of people emerging and we don't want uh, us to lower the standards. We have a duty to promote the profession and protect it, right? Yes, absolutely, Sam. I, I, I really agree with that. And I like what you said in your last point. In us having this kind of conversations, it's also not just for those who are looking for coaching services, but also for those who are looking to come into the industry, yes. that they are making the right choices and choosing the right providers and institutions and understand what it really means and what the journey is like uh, um, uh, for them to be engaged uh, uh, to for them. So it's also giving them information, yes. so to say, as to what what the journey of the, the coaching really look like. Yeah. Because some of them are really being misled by some providers just selling uh, the coaching just to get people in a room and and uh, for training, but uh, you know they don't. Uh, there's a next step after that they're not aware of. So before they go into it, that they are really fully equipped and prepared and understand the journey and make very informed decisions for themselves about the journey. So I like that part also. Wow. What you just said. Lovely, lovely. Thank you very much, Esme, ladies and gentlemen. That is coaching one o one. Uh, during the same Zima coaching slot at Cometa Radio Africa. We have just started. We are just scratching the surface. We're going to go deeper as time goes. And I look forward to the next session. I hope we can maybe look into things like supervision, training providers in detail, the coaching content, the accreditation, you name it. So uh, uh, it's a journey that has just started. Thank you for tuning in. And we look forward to welcoming you next time. Thank you, Esme, for your time. Thank you, Sam, for having me. Lovely. Goodbye. Bye.